Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And good morning, everyone. As you heard before Mass, my name is Father Karl Han, and I'm very thankful to Father Reginald here, the rector, uh, for allowing me to say Mass here in the beautiful Basilica of Manila Cathedral. Uh, it's a great honor and privilege for me, and it's, I'm, I'm like your good selves uh, who listened to Mass every day. I did the same in Ireland, and I followed Father Reggie and the priests here, um, I was very uh, taken by the beautiful ceremony for Cardinal Lavincula, and um, I'm so thankful to God. I'm so thankful to God that uh, I've been able to come out here a lot through the love and the care of some Filipino people, families, that I uh, got in contact with her. They contacted me in my parish in Ireland and they followed my masses. Uh, so I just took this opportunity to come here and to be a part of your faith community and your family in Christ. So my dear friends, this is the uh, Feast of Our Lady on a Saturday. Uh, we think of uh, Mama Mary, we think of her love for God, for Jesus, we think of uh, Jesus' unbounding love for you and for me. And at the very beginning of this Mass together, we thank God.
for the wonder of Mary and her freedom uh, to say yes to God in her life. Maybe at the beginning of our Mass, we have that same freedom to say yes to God by offering our lives to him through Mary. So we call to mind now our sins and we ask for God's pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, you my brothers and sisters, that I have, that greatly, I have sinned greatly sinned in my, in my thoughts, thoughts and in, and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have, what I have failed to do. do. And I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the, all the angels, angels and saints, and, and you, you, my brothers, brothers and, sisters, and sisters, to pray, pray for, for me to the, the Lord our God. God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may enjoy in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow, and may we enjoy eternal happiness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, someone may say, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come back? You fool, what you sow is not brought to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel of wheat, perhaps, or of some other kind. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown corruptible, it is raised incorruptible, it is sown dishonorable, it is raised glorious, it is sown weak, it is raised powerful, it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual one. So too it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly, and as is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. Now I know that God is with me. In God, in whose promise I glory. In God I trust without fear. What can flesh do against me? I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. I am bound, O God, by vows to you. Your thank offerings I will fulfill. For you have rescued me from death, my feet too from stumbling 
that I may walk before God in the light of the living. I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. Please all stand. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and deal the harvest through perseverance. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When a large crowd gathered with people from one town after another, journeying to Jesus, he spoke in a parable. A sower went out to sow seed, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and was trampled, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground, and when it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew, it produced fruit a hundredfold. After saying this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. Then his disciples asked him what the meaning of this parable might be. He answered, Knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been granted to you. But to the rest, they are made known through parables, so that they may look but not see, and hear but not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those on the path are the ones who have heard. But the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts that they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a time and fall away in time of temptation. As for the seed that fell among thorns, they are the ones who have heard, but as they go along, they are choked by the anxieties and riches and pleasures of life, and they fail to, to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they have heard the word, embrace it with a generous and good heart and bear fruit through perseverance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. One obvious fact about the person of Jesus, which can be taken very much for granted, is the fact that Jesus saw good in the saint 
and in the sinner. And when Jesus speaks about the parable of the sower, he is not in any way condemning people who have maybe perhaps lost their way in life. What he is actually saying is, here the sower is sowing the seed, and due to different circumstances in people's lives, maybe they are not able to hear the Word of God. Maybe they are choked because of the riches of the world, the false values that we see in life. But Jesus is saying to them that something can happen in their lives where they can open their hearts to God. They can open their hearts to God. You look at the way in which Jesus was able to bring the best out of the sinner in the Gospels. Think of the Samaritan woman who was married three or four times. And there's this interplay between um, the, the water that she was looking for in the well of Sychar and Jesus speaking to her about another type of water, the water that endures for eternal life. And it's only at the very end that her eyes are opened and she realizes that she is loved. She actually is loved because of the fact that uh, even though her life was almost destroyed by the circumstances that took place in her life, she was given a second chance by Jesus. So much so, she ran the whole way into the Samaritan village and they came and they begged Jesus to stay for a few days. And that is why I'm saying that on this feast of Mama Mary, of Our Lady, we see someone who freely said yes to Jesus and to her son and to God. And Simeon said that her soul would be pierced with suffering. But through that suffering, she was mature enough to be with the disciples of Jesus in the upper room, along with other women and the disciples. And what did they do? They prayed continuously. They prayed continuously because maybe they felt guilty at what they did to Jesus, but Mary was there to say, whatever weaknesses happened, I am your mother, and I want you to be my sons. The first reading, we hear about the body. And I remember when I was studying for the priesthood, well over 40 years ago, the bishop at that time was a Bishop Edward Daly. And he said to us that in our country, we have the autumn now, and the leaves on the trees turn red and orange and yellow and crimson. And he said it's something like life itself. Very often, maybe, we concentrate too much on the clothes we wear, on the way 
we keep ourselves and maybe perhaps we don't realize that deep within us it's that in the spiritual body that Jesus is speaking about in the parable of the sower. And he, I always remember him saying, have a great respect for the elderly, for the grandparents, uh, for people who may not be as physically beautiful as their grandchildren, but who are spiritually beautiful, where we can find wisdom in people whose bodies may be degenerating because of health issues, but who are deeply at home with God. On this Feast of Our Lady, let us thank God for the gift of faith and let us today maybe open our hearts more to appreciate the wonder and the love of Jesus Christ, son of Mama Mary, who came into this world so that we would have life and have it in abundance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please all stand. Thank you. Christ teaches us through the parables. Christ is the sower of the seed and God's word. So let us now respond to his words by praying to the Father. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church in the world may be like the rich soil yielding a hundredfold harvest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the leaders of our nation may govern in a way which is pleasing to God and to its citizens. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That unchecked ambitions and selfishness may never choke the word of God in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That the sick may experience the healing power of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have died may enjoy light, happiness, and peace in heaven. And may those burdened with grief be strengthened by God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to recognize the seeds of your word work in our lives. May we never be distracted by the cares of this world, and may we be active uh, to your service, and so produce an abundant harvest. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please all stand. Let's make sure, yes, okay. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. We make our prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and you have extended the abundant mercy of Mary from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and, and earth, earth are, are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, and make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection of Christ, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of, your res of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Uh, let us offer a sign of peace, whatever way we offer ourselves, to one another and to God. Yes. Lamb of, of God, God, you take, you take away, away the sins the of, the of the world, world. Have, mercy have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world, world. have mercy on us. Lamb of God, God you take, take away, away the sins of the world, the world. Grant, grant us peace. peace. Please kneel. Faith in your love and mercy, eat your body and drink your blood. And not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and in body. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not, I am worthy, not worthy that you should enter you under, my, under roof, my roof. But, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my, my soul, soul shall be healed. healed.
I just want once again to thank Father uh, Reggie, Father Reginald, uh, who's our uh, rector here. And the only thing I want to say at the very end, myself, is that I'll be going back to Ireland and at half past 12 in the morning, I will join you uh, from Ireland listening to Mass here, which I have done through, throughout COVID. And uh, I just want to thank you all. I want to thank my family who are listening in and any of my own workers or staff in the parish that I am involved in in Ireland. So we just bow our heads now and we pray for our final prayer. As we receive the heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption, and we make this our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a while. Before we conclude this celebration, I wish to thank you for coming today to the Manila Cathedral and participate in our morning Mass. I'm sure many of you came in order to venerate the true relic of our Lord Jesus exposed now at the Manila Cathedral. And for those who still wish to come over to venerate the relic, the relic will be available for public veneration the whole day tomorrow, Sunday. And in a special way, we wish to thank our presider for today's Mass, Father Carl Hahn from uh, the Diocese of Derry in Ireland. He is a priest from St. Mary's Church in Caldaf in Ireland, and um, he is visiting the Philippines. Um, his connection to the Philippines started because of the online uh, uh, connections and ministries. As Father said, he is a member of the online community of the Manila Cathedral for the past uh, more than two years. He has been joining our morning Mass, which is, as Father said, about 12.30 in the morning in Ireland. I'm sure many of you are here also because you have been joining our online uh, services. And so, like you, Father is here visiting us in order to be physically present to our, in our mother church, the Manila Cathedral. And um, Father also went to Zamwanga a few days ago uh, to connect with some friends that he also met online. And so, Father, who was uh, attending our Masses, came here. Maybe, God willing, Father, one day we will also be able to visit you there in Ireland. Let us give Father a round of applause. As we say in Filipino, maraming salamat, Father, for being here today. Uh, let us now have our final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, our Mass has ended. Thanks be to God.